Hello guys and welcome back to Motherland Empire reality show. So guys I want to tell you something. Why is this reality show? Okay. Uh, the reality of running a business is that running a business is not a child's play, it's not a joke and it's not a laughing matter guys. Uh, the first thing when you want to run a business like this, you have to look for a good location. Yeah. First you need some capital so you can put your stock, stock for the bar and stock for the kitchen. Like I told you guys, I'm running food, drinks and entertainment. So you need to put your stock. And not just put it, you need to maintain your stock. Okay? I have some notes here that I'm going to read. Some of the things that you're going to see me doing during this reality show. Yeah? Uh, I'm already putting um, everything together for you. And uh, after you have your capital, yeah? You need your licenses, yeah? In Kenya, you need alcohol license, you need health license, you need all kinds of licenses. You need to pay your rent, you need to stock, and you need to brand. Uh, branding includes putting uniforms and name tags and all kinds of stuff, yeah? Other things you're gonna see here are the process of hiring and firing. Sometimes you're always forced to fire an employee because of some things that you cannot stand. For example, uh, anybody working for me, they know what I value. One of the things that I value the most is honesty. I cannot deal with lies, yeah? The moment I find you lying, from, lying to me about anything or trying to steal from me, usually I'm done. I'm done and I don't feel sympathy or empathy for you. When it comes to my business, I am totally heartless. I can be laughing with you right now and firing you the next minute. I need sobriety. I'm running an alcoholic business. And if you are taking care of a drunkard, you cannot be a drunkard yourself. So something like sobriety, sometimes when an employee drinks, I can give you a warning, but it can only be one warning. If you're drunk again and you're at work, you have to go. So that is one of the things that I cannot stand when running my business, yeah? It's important for me for you to keep time. Sometimes when you give somebody a job, uh, they start to relax and they start to take it for granted. I don't like anybody taking my work for granted because I pay you salary and I pay you on time. So if you're working for me, you have to be on time and you have to keep time. The moment you're showing me that you're too comfortable and you're too relaxed, I have to let you go. Another thing that uh, is important to me is problem resolution. I do not like people keeping things in their heart and making sudden decisions without any inquiries. Yeah, I'll give you guys an example of a lady that I really trusted in my counter. Suddenly, I'm being told that she has quit. Apparently, I don't know, the manager, uh, whatever, was talking in parables about her. That had nothing to do with her, had nothing, but it's really important because nobody is perfect and no one is perfect. But if you have any issue, you need to try to address it first and find a resolution. That's why we always have almost daily meetings, especially on the weekends. We have meetings and we always insist that you have to say whatever is in your heart so that when you go home, you go home when you're free. The last thing that I'm gonna say right now that I really, 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 really hate is employee theft. Employee theft is something that has really, really pulled me backwards. And you know, it has been especially in the kitchen. I told you guys that I really love my team. I really love working with the people that I have right now. But I'm not going to lie to you. I don't trust anybody 100% because that is what Kenya has taught me. You cannot trust anybody. The person you trust the most is the person who ends up betraying you in a company. Yeah? I have had professional chefs who either they are stealing cooking oil, they are stealing onions, they are stealing tomatoes, they are stealing... Um, sometimes they are selling and putting money in their pockets. Sometimes they are just lying to you that the customer has not paid. At the end of the day, this is a business and you are going on a loss. You have to again go back to your pocket and restock that kitchen. Something that employees sometimes don't realize is that when you're running a business, it's not just about the money that they are selling on the counter. Yeah, They don't understand that in addition to the money you are paying them or the money that they are selling, you as a business person, you have to pay rent for the business premises, you have to pay the employees, you have to pay DSTV, you have to pay for internet, you have to pay for electricity. You also have a family that you want to take care of. And so running a business is not a child's joke. There are so many other things that I involve, like sometimes uh, 
uh, changing furniture. So when people are working, for example, somebody is selling in the counter and they're saying, oh, I've sold 30,000, I've sold 50,000, they think, oh, that's a lot of money, but they don't realize how much burden is on the business owner, how many people you have to pay, how much rent you have to pay. In my business premise, I pay 36,000 per month, and that 360 US dollars, that is a lot of money, and it takes a lot. Alcohol don't have a lot of profit. Usually like when you sell one beer sometimes all you are getting is 27 shillings. So how many beers do you need to sell in order to get 36,000 Kenya shillings rent? So that's why uh, usually I don't feel sympathy or empathy for anybody who is stealing from me. Especially in my counter, in my kitchen, I catch you live, you have to go and there is no second chance. So you guys are going to get to see the actual mercy, the business woman. You guys have seen mercy, the musician. You have seen mercy, the joker, the uh, whatever, the crazy woman. But when it comes to mercy, the musician, I don't care who you are. Yeah, the company will continue running with or without you. We are not going to close our business because one person has quit. We have to keep going and we have to keep pushing. So like I told you guys, this place turned from being a food restaurant into a nightclub. And now if you're running a nightclub, there are people that think that people expect to see. I brought in live entertainment at night. I told you guys, on Friday and Saturday night, I always have live exotic dancers on the stage. And that is why you see a pole over here. And wherever um, they come in the house, they always also come from different backgrounds, with different terms. Sometimes they have to start, they, sometimes they start fighting among themselves. And we're gonna get to see that, they fight among themselves, yeah? But what we have to do is try to find a solution as much as possible, yeah? Saturdays, uh, Sundays I always have Ohangla, a very nice group, and you're gonna get to see them, you're gonna get to meet them, guys. Um, the last thing that I'm going to say, something that I cannot stand as mercy artist in my business, is relationships within the workplace, yeah? For instance, a manager fucking a waitress. What the fuck? You cannot control somebody you're fucking. You can't tell them, oh, please. Uh, clean that table. Why are you late? Why? Because you are sleeping in bed with them, right? How the heck? I have had this situation before where I had a very professional manager from Nairobi, yeah? It ended up that suddenly everything was just falling apart. The food display was full of uh, flies everywhere. They are not cleaning. He's just sitting relaxing. I came to find out one day that he was actually fucking the cashier and the waitress and everybody. He was sleeping around with all the women. And uh, there is no way, I don't ever want to go back to that situation where, especially a manager fucking an employee, it doesn't work like that. And I always prefer, we keep it like brothers and sisters when you're at motherland, we keep it real, yeah? If somebody's wrong, you tell them. And they can't catch feelings because what? I'm fucking you, bitch. Okay, so one of the other things that I face, I face so many challenges running this business, yeah? Another challenge that I really, really face is jealous neighbors. Man, in Kenya it's sad, but nobody wants to see you take a step forward. Nobody wants to see you progress. Where I have my uh, club, there are about 10 other nightclubs or even more that are surrounding me. And you find most of the time that uh, the neighbors, they feel bad when you have customers and they don't have customers. I don't know who they are. I don't know where we just met here. You're doing a business. I'm doing my own business. So I have one neighbor, especially, who was really, really calling the police to close my business, pumping money in the police station to close my business, yeah? And she tried all kinds of things. And by the way, for a second, I closed, yeah? One of the things that I really faced at Motherland is police harassment. I was being harassed every day. I was paying monthly fee to the police. I was paying daily fees to the police. I was still getting arrested every two weeks. I was getting charged in court. I was paying money to the bribe. Like, all the money I was selling was literally going to the police. At, at last, I saw that this was the end of me. When they find me 50,000 Kenya shillings in court, I decided to close Motherland. And when I closed Motherland, I decided to air everything out. Especially because I had sent the OCS and M-Pesa 
message yeah and my statement if you print it it could show that i was withdrawing money every month from a mpesa near kitendela police station yeah i thank god that good people like boniface mwangi came through and we managed to resolve this problem amicably yeah right now i'm grateful because the ocs in kitengela right now has given me a chance to recover all the money i lost i also want to thank so much kadiado county government because they waived my licenses for the rest of the year and they promised me that i can work and try to recover the money that i lost during that time but all this when i came to find out is because of a jealous neighbor why the heck are you jealous I don't know you, you don't know me. What I try to do when I'm at Wonderland, I mind my own business. I stay in my business. I don't care which employees you have, what you don't have. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care your customers. I just try to focus on my own business. But you cannot ignore that business jealousy is very, very bad here in Kenya. Sometimes they come just to watch what is going on. Do they have customers? Are they doing this? Are they doing this? And maybe you're going to get to see some people who are coming just to find out what the heck is going on yeah so uh, guys uh, thank you so much again welcome to motherland reality show you're gonna get to see uh, how we handle food the cleanliness everything that goes on at motherland in raw form so this is the end of my introduction officially and I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the show I love you guys so much. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe right now. And I'm giving you three seconds. Three, two, one, go. Thank you so much for the subscription, guys. On our Instagram page, you can follow us at Club Motherland. My own Instagram page is Mercy Music. Music with a K. M E R C Y. Music. M U S I K. Yeah? On Facebook, Club Motherland. On Instagram, Club Motherland 034. On Twitter, Club Motherland. On TikTok, Club Motherland. Guys, see you soon and Guarini. Bye. I don't give a.